This video is about biomass transfers. This is part of the ecology unit and it's for GCSE biology uh, students only. And this follows on from my previous video on pyramids of biomass and trophic levels. Let's do a quick spec check again. So transfer of biomass. So you should be able to describe pyramids of biomass. And, and if you've looked at my previous video, you'll be able to do that. But we need to now explain how biomass is lost between the different trophic levels and talk about producers and talk about uh, where the losses of biomass might be. Notice as well to the right hand side here, you need to be able to calculate the efficiency of biomass transfer between trophic levels. If you're doing higher tier biology, that definitely will come up. So um, it's important to practice that math skill and that's what I'm gonna go through in this video. So just a quick reminder to you that the first stage of um, any food chain is related to photosynthesis from sunlight. So photosynthesis by green plants and algae uh, from sunlight. Now, it's important to state that uh, producers on planet Earth, they only use 1% of what we call the incident light energy from the sun used for, and it's used for photosynthesis to produce biomass. So only 1% of usable sunlight um, is actually being transferred into biomass. There's a really good reason for that. So that's what I'm going to talk about uh, now. So as it says there, not all energy is going to be transferred to plants because of three different reasons, three main reasons. Firstly, sunlight is reflected back into space. So it might uh, hit the atmosphere and be reflected back or it might hit the Earth and then be reflected back into the atmosphere or into space. Secondly, not all wavelengths of light can be absorbed. So a bit of physics here that light is uh, basically consists of different wavelength, wavelengths of light. Only certain wavelengths can be uh, used by the plant or chlorophyll. chlorophyll. And then thirdly, light may not fall on a chlorophyll molecule in the chloroplasts of the plant cells. So those are three main reasons why not all the energy is transferred to a producer. Once photosynthesis has occurred and producers have um, photosynthes photosynthesized and biomass has been produced, then obviously it's going to be eaten by a herbivore. Now, um, at each trophic level, only approximately 10% of the biomass from each trophic level is transferred to the level above it. So there are, again, some really good reasons why that is the case. So firstly, uneaten material. So when a, uh, a herbivore or carnivore eats something, then some parts might not be eaten. So for carnivores, they might not eat the bones or herbivores, they can't digest all the parts of the plant. So for, for example, cellulose in the cellulose cell wall is very tough and very hard to be digested. Secondly, waste products such as, um, well, urine and feces so energy is lost in excretion of the urine and feces and carbon dioxide and water are produced as well as a byproduct of respiration so be released excess proteins can be broken down into urea which is poisonous and therefore needs to be released into urine so all those waste products would contain energy and thirdly respiration so again lots of glucose in respiration provides um, energy, it should say energy, uh, for movement and keeping warm. So some of the energy is gonna be used by the animal not to produce biomass, but for moving around and to maintain body temperature, particularly if they're warm blooded animals. So here's an example of a horse. So you can see the horse is taking in, is eating the producer, the grass in this case, and it's going to be digested. Now, some of the biomass, only about 10%, is gonna be turned into horse biomass, but the rest of it is gonna be lost or transferred. So biomass can be lost in urine and feces. It can be used to provide energy for movement, growth, uh, maintaining heat. Uh, energy is lost as heat as well from cellular respiration. So there's many ways that um, it, 
isn't converted into biomass. Okay, so what I would like you to do, again, I'd like you to get a pen and piece of paper, uh, and I'd like you to fill in the missing gap. So you're gonna have to pause the video now. Okay, so let's go through the answers. So the amounts of biomass and energy contained in living things always gets less at each stage of a food chain from producers onwards. So biomass is lost as waste products and used to produce energy in respiration. This is used for movement and to control body temperature. Only a small amount is used for growth. So those are the reasons for um, why not all of the biomass is why not all of the energy is converted into biomass. Um, now we need to do some math skills. Now we need to calculate the efficiency of energy transfers. So you would use this calculation. So efficiency is the biomass transferred to the next level divided by the biomass available at the previous level times 100 to get a percentage. So here we have an example in a food chain and it shows you the biomass um, available to the next level. Um, and it shows that 43 kilograms is the amount of biomass available to green flies and 4.2 kilograms is available to ladybirds. So it says biomass lost at the second trophic level. So what you would need to do is take the rose bush minus the uh, second level which is 42 so that gives 38 kilograms now if you want to work out the efficiency of biomass transfer then what you've got to do is take the biomass transfer to the next level which in this case is 4.2 and divide by 43 times 100 and that will give you 9.8 percent so let's have a look at another example Okay, so here's a practice question. So it shows the, uh, the biomass at each level of a food chain. I'd like you to calculate the efficiency of biomass transfer between the third and fourth trophic levels. And I'd like you to show your working. So again, please pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so between three and four. So we need to know the fourth level first. So it's 0 0.055 and divided by 0 0.56 you times it by 100 and um, lo and behold, you, well, you get exactly the same answer as I just showed you there. Uh, but it's a different question, but it is 9.8%. So you can see you take the biomass transfer to the next level divided by the biomass available at the previous level times 100. So this is the next level divided by the previous times 100. And that will give you the answer. OK, another type of question is to calculate energy transfer between the trophic levels. So it's very similar calculation. So energy transfer is the energy available after the transfer divided by the energy available before the transfer and times by 100 to get a percentage. So what I would like you to do is have a look at this question and decide on what we call the ecological efficiency uh, between these trophic levels. So again, pause and have a go at the question. Okay, so there we have the answers. So for primary consumers, it's 17%. Secondary consumers, 8%. Tertiary consumers, 10%. Now, I know I did say to you the transfer between trophic levels is around about 10%. It usually is around 10%, but it can change. And I think you need to use the data that they give you in the exam question and go with that data. So even though it might be different to 10%, um, you would go with that data. But as you can see, the answers are generally around that figure. I mean, if you're finding primary consumers was at 87%, then obviously your calculations would be incorrect. If you're in my class, then I've given you some exam questions to have a go at. I hope you found that useful. Um, and please do subscribe if you're not already. I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please do subscribe if you haven't already to uh, Dr. Biology and there'll be more videos coming soon.